Hey everyone, it's Sam McKay from Enterprise DNA here. I want to go over something quite unique today. Uh, and basically it revolves around how can you create a table? How can you create a table with a formula um, by combining the union function and the row function? Okay, so let's just dive into it. I'm going to show you an example. We'll walk, work through one. So to create a table with formula, you first of all want to be using the new table feature here. Right? That ena this enables us to use a variety or basically any DAX function which returns a table and actually return a physical table. Now in this case, I want to create a totally, I want to basically create a totally brand new table just w by um, inputting parameters inside of a, a, a formula. Okay. And then I'll show you, um, you know, I'll, I'll compare it and contrast it to an alternative method that you could use and, and then try and um, let you understand, well, enable you to understand why you would use this in some scenarios, okay? And so what we're going to call this, we're going to call this a um, custom, well, it's just a custom table, you can call it anything basically. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go, I'm going to go row here and I'm going to show what row does and then we're going to utilize the union to actually bring it all together. So what I can do here is I can create, I can create one row of information um, on anything. So all I have to do is I have to name the column and then put inside the expression or value. Okay. And so what I might want to do here is I'm, I'm going to call this one, um, I'm going to call this group and I'll put uh, the Expression can actually just be like a, a word, so I might want to put like um, some text. I'm going to put top, and then I'm going to say, okay, well, this uh, one is going to be um, the we'll call this one the min, and we'll call this one 0.8, and then oh, actually no, we want um, no, that's right, yeah, that's right, and then we'll go max, and see here I can just keep going, and then I'm going to call this one. Okay, and so just just in isolation, check check this one out, um, and see what it returns. So you see there that just with row, we can actually return a table basically with one row. But then check out what you can do by combining this with the union. Okay, so I'm going to go union, and what union enables us to do is bang tables together, so we can bang tables one on top of each other as many as we want. Okay, and so I'll, I'll just bring, I'll just set this up a bit better, and I'll go comma, and so you see here I can input table two, I'm going to go down to a new row, and I just, I'm going to paste, paste this along here, and then I'm going to come down to another new row, and paste this along here, and then close it off, and you know, all I've got to do, and check out, check this out, all I've got to do, if I wanted to change these rounds, is change the parameters inside of here. And so I'm just using some some random values here, but you could do this yourself and you can put anything in here. And then I'm going to go, and I'm going to call this bottom, and then this is my min. And so you might have seen me go through techniques or create tables like this manually for, uh, and I've sometimes called these supporting tables. And basically this, this, this would be a supporting table and some logic that we would um, put through it and that would enable us to segment our customers or products into groups based on whatever logic we want to um, input. So now that we have these rows incorporated with union, check out what you can check out what this table is now. So this table has been generated just by information or code that we have written inside of here. And then you see here that we now have the supporting table which would then sit inside of our model and we could utilize it however we like. Usually I put my supporting my supporting tables down the bottom there to represent that they aren't part of the core model, but would have a logic that would run through them. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, we could have just created this by going into data, right? And and that's true. And that's very, very true. Or you could go and hit, hit Excel or, or hit some simple table elsewhere. But where this could be relevant, right, where this could be very relevant is say, for instance, you want to go and grab these numbers from somewhere else in your model or somewhere else inside of Power BI and you want to do it in a sort of dynamic way. This is how on refresh you can get this table to update with information or results which have been calculated inside of Power BI.
And that's why this is so powerful. Say, for instance, you want to segment your customers based on their sales, but that sales amount changes for the min and the max. It might be a different number based on the you know, average sales that your customers are making. Well, you can generate this table more dynamically by having some sort of calculation in here that goes and breaks up your customer information based on the sales amount that is being generated or the sales amount that is, you know, being budgeted or, or historically being calculated, etc. And that's where this, this particular technique is really, really powerful. The other way that you could start using this as well is virtually. Okay. So it's not, so you could actually, you could actually create a table like this, um, which is a basically totally made up table and input this table is a table function inside a variable which goes inside a okay, calculation and so there, there is a few ways that this can be applied and I, I think I'll work up an example of that in the near future uh, to show you how this could be applied inside a measure versus actually creating a physical table because this is also you know this is absolutely fine to create a virtual table out of this as well it's exactly the same thing exactly the same logic and you just have to input um, the right parameters in there okay all the best hey everyone Thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the contents covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, Check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.